What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and uh, before we get too far into our systems discussion of you know breakouts, transitioning through the neutral zone, um, offensive zone attacks, I wanted to take a few minutes and just quickly touch on a topic that it's really simple but I think it's pretty important and um, there's I know that there's a little bit of room for misunderstanding on this so uh, that's why I wanted to you know quickly touch on it make sure that everybody's on the same page um, so that you guys can know where I'm coming from and uh, make the proper adjustments and, uh, and applications as we go through the rest of the course. So um, this is, let's pull up the rink here, and uh, I'm sure you guys have all seen this before. These are the three lanes of hockey. Um, when I first started playing hockey, and this was uh, you know back in the, the mid 80s, uh, one of the very first things, you know, as I progressed out of that kind of house league range where you know teams actually started playing positions, um, one of the very first things my coach told me was, all right, Jeremy, look, when you're a right winger, you stay on the right side. And he drew the three lanes down the ice. He said, right winger stay on the right side, left winger stay on the left side, and uh, centerman stays in the middle. And um, and that's you know that that was the very first uh, inkling of positioning that I ever learned. Now, um, as the game progressed, and as you know, as it became more international, uh, we began to see a little bit more, especially I, I call it a European style of play where players are crisscrossing through the lanes, they're, you know, the positioning is a lot more dynamic. It's not just, you know, right, right, right winger stay on the right side, left winger stay on the left side. Players are crisscrossing through lanes, um, and this allows for a lot of different things to happen, including support, timing, all kinds of different stuff. So, um, what I like to do is, I, you know, I still think of, of um, the game in terms of lanes a little bit, but I'm always consistently, constantly thinking of you know crossing through the lanes. Um, for example, let's just do a you know really quick breakout here. Uh, we won't do uh, anything too complicated with positioning, but um, let's just say that we've got our breakout. I'm just going to put players in positions here. So we've got our centerman, we've got our winger, right winger, left winger. I'm drawing this uh, as if we're breaking out from our um, sagging zone, defensive zone coverage. And we've got our right defenseman down here. He's got the puck. We won't draw like where they've been skating. We'll just assume that they've beaten their attackers and now they're ready to make the breakout play. And then we've got our left defenseman somewhere down here. Oops, drew another puck. Left defenseman right there. Okay, so as this play progresses, we've got our right winger. He's gonna kind of slide in. We've got our centerman who's swinging through the middle lane and we will go like this. Pass up. Little one touch pass to the centerman who's providing middle support. Okay. As this is happening, the left winger has read the play and is coming like this. Crisscrossing through the lane. So he's cutting through all three lanes. Um, the reason why that's so effective is because A, it's a better passing angle, it's a shorter pass, and um, it's also more likely that he'll pick it up because. Um, you know, he's not having to look behind him as he's skating up the ice to receive the pass. So uh, basically what will happen here is the centerman will be swinging through the middle, he'll pick up the puck, maybe take a couple strides with it. I usually like to have the guy go wide uh, and then hit the breakaway man with a pass. Okay, so that's a little bit more of a European um, style where, you know, the players are crisscrossing through the lanes. Now, as we see, um, what happens after the play, and we'll get into a little bit more of this as we get into offensive zone attack, but now we've got the left winger attacking the zone on the right side, okay, which is cool because that puts him on his forehand side anyways, so it works really well. Um, I always say that systems and positioning should transition from, from one objective into the next, so your defensive zone coverage transitions into your breakout, your breakout transitions into your neutral zone, uh, and your or your neutral zone play in your neutral zone transitions into your offensive attack. Um, the centerman will most likely be the uh, second man in the play here. So he will, after he makes that pass, he'll drive wide as F2. And then the right winger will most likely make that pass loop in behind the centerman to create backside support. And then he'll come down the ice as the trailer man. So as you can see, we entered the zone with the attack triangle. Um, we've got support going in the defensive zone, support through the neutral zone, and support through the offensive zone. And uh, what it does is, is it makes a, uh, a strong attack, a lot of uh, good passes because all the passing angles are, are easy passing angles, 
And the, the way that the support is set up is the puck carrier should always have a front side option and a back side option, which means if he happens to lose the puck, generally there's a back side support guy coming through to pick it up. So that is a little quick discussion on lanes. I am not a big fan of having wingers stay on the wings and centermen stay in the center. Um, I prefer a more dynamic. In the in the defensive zone, I, I like structured positions. In the offensive zone and neutral zone, I like crisscrossing through lanes, read and react, and um, you know, playing based on where the play needs to be, not based on like locked into a certain position. So that's uh, my little two cents worth on lanes. I love crisscrossing through lanes, and uh, that's what most of our systems will be will be uh, taking that into account and based off that concept.